IFTT pin is a self-calibrating pin entry method. We took an interface previously reported in the literature and added the concept of self-calibration to it. And that allows users to decide in their mind how to use the interface without communicating this to the machine and yet being able to succeed in their interaction. And so our motivation is to show how we can do calibration-free personalization of an interface. And we chose this context of pin entry because it's a familiar context that people can try in a minute at home to understand and try properties of self-calibrating systems. So that's the first interface we are going to start with. It's an interface we took from the literature on pin entry methods, and it's broken down as follows. On the top, you have where the digits are positioned. In the middle, you have colored digits, which are the machine asking you a question. What color is the digit you want to enter? And we answer by clicking the corresponding button. So for example, we can try and type a two. So on this interface, if we look at two, two is yellow. So I'm going to answer my digit is yellow. We change the color, two is gray, my digit is gray. Two is gray again, my digit is gray. And the last time. And here we have communicated to the machine after a few steps that our digit is number two. Now what we want to do is add self-calibration to this interface and that's the core of the paper, which means that now a user one might want to use the buttons with that color pattern. Another user might want to use it with this color pattern and you're free to choose any of those colors combination on this pad. But we're going to have a try and think in our mind that we decide that we want to type a number four and we decide that we want to use the buttons in that way. Heading to our interface that you have a link in the paper to try, we look at number four and we only, you and me, know that this is yellow, number four is yellow again, this is yellow, and number four is gray, so I'm clicking on the gray button that only I know is gray, and I continue this interaction for a few clicks and you see that. The machine understood what I was trying to do and how I was trying to do it with the color of those buttons without me communicating this to the machine. As this work is an interesting process that we describe in the paper and also we developed an interactive part of this interface to show you how the algorithm works under the hood. We're going to try and tap a seven together, so with different digits using a different color pattern. Let's not focus on the right side for now and let's just type the digit. Seven is yellow, I'm clicking on yellow. Seven is gray, seven is yellow, seven is yellow again. And two in that case was enough, so I never had to use this button, which is okay. And we can look at seven now and you see that every dot on those buttons has the same color for the same button. That means that every time the user tried to communicate yellow, they used the yellow button consistently. But if we look at six, which is what the user could have been trying to do, which is typing a six, then when they use the middle button, they would use it to mean yellow and gray, which is inconsistent. And that's the case for all the other digits. And that's how we can find out about seven. We really invite you to try this because it's hard to explain in a minute video, but it's really intuitive once we learn to use it. What we did then is we compared what happened when we add self-calibration to a system. We try to compare with other methods in the literature, but for here, we'll just compare the two methods I just presented. First, the encoding rate. Obviously, adding this layer of self-calibration reduced the number of digits we could enter in a minute and by about a 1.4 factor. But on the security side, somebody trying to decode what you're trying to do would take on average 8.5 more times than for the other method which leads to an increased security usability trade-off that we can compute the rate of entering over the rate of decoding, which measures how difficult it is for a pin to be decoded in real time. And our score for this new method was the highest of the method we compared. And overall, what we did is added self-calibration to an existing interface. And that is the main takeaway we would like you to experience through the interactive demonstration. Thank you.